Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to look at adding a kind of teleport ability to our characters. So uh, I am using the first person template, as you can see here, um, but the concepts here should apply to a third person game or, you know, kind of any other game. You just need to make sure that you uh, change up some of the variables that we'll use. So uh, with that, let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to open up our uh, first person character so we'll open it and you know we've got some kind of logic in here already um, we've got this kind of spawn projectile which fires when you click a left mouse button right so we're gonna go ahead and, and add our own input action event so we'll go to edit project settings go to input and down here by ma action mappings we're going to add a new one that we will call teleport now since the fire button is already using the left, left mouse button. We are going to use the right mouse button uh, for this teleport event. Um, but you know, you could add or you could change it to whatever key really you want. Okay, so we'll just use the right mouse button for now. Okay, and we'll go back to our first person character. And now that we've added that action mapping, we can go ahead and right click and then type teleport. Oops, teleport and it will show our action event right here. So we want the input action teleport event and now off of pressed we are going to do what's called a line trace line trace by channel and this will help us determine how far or where rather to teleport to. Okay, So to determine our start and end we need to uh, get our first person camera here and we're going to drag off and say get world location Right, and we'll plug that straight into the start. Now to calculate the end direction, we want to take our camera and get the forward vector. And this returns a value of one um, in the x direction. So basically it'll always be whatever direction is forward for your character like at that moment. So um, with that knowledge, we'll take this and say uh, vector times float. So we'll multiply this value of 1 by however many units into space that we want it to go. So if, by default, let's just say 1,000. So we'll teleport 1,000 units. Now all we need to do is drag off of our get world location and say vector plus vector. Hook this up. And now, now we have our end location. So basically, it'll start at our camera. Okay, It'll start right here. And then it will end out there a thousand units okay so uh, next we're gonna change the trace uh, trace channel here to camera uh, because by default all the objects in the world uh, block the camera collision channel all right and then we'll change this to the draw debug type to four duration just so that you can see it so we'll compile and save really quick and we'll press play to try this out so if I right click you see it adds these little lines these red lines um, and if I hit something, you see it adds a little red box where it hit. Okay, and so we're going to use this information to help us determine where we can teleport. Okay, so if it hits something, then we're going to teleport us to where it hit, so that we don't, you know, pass through anything accidentally and get stuck in a wall. Um, but if it doesn't hit anything, you know, then we'll just go to wherever that line ended. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our return value of the trace which returns whether we hit something or not. And we're going to do a branch just like this. And basically, if it does hit something, then we want to break the out hit here, break the hit result. And we are going to say teleport. Okay, so this is kind of a built-in function in Unreal, and we're going to teleport us to the location of the hit. All right. Now, if we don't hit anything, then again, we're going to say teleport all right, and this time we want to use the end location here. So this is our end location. So we'll go ahead and take this value and go plug it into the destination location of the teleport. All right, so now you could add some reroute nodes just to make this a little, you know, a little more organized. And there we go. For all intents and purposes, um, we now have our teleport ability. So if we try this out, right, I can right click now and it'll teleport me. Now if I hit something. It won't, you know, teleport me through the wall. Um, you know, if you guys want to see how 
we could do that, you know, teleport through a wall potentially. Um, you know, I could show a tutorial on that, but for right now, it seems to be working. Right? And you can you can click it multiple times and fly up into the air and then kind of drop. And yeah, so it's working. Um, now what we can do if you want is to add kind of a cool little effect. All right? So um, we're going to create some space here and we're going to break this link to start. Um, same with this one. And um, basically what we're going to do is uh, when we start this this uh, event, right? When we fire off our trace, you know, to try to teleport, we're going to add kind of a little zoom in effect to sort of simulate like teleporting f through space and time, okay? So to do that, we'll drag off of true and say add timeline. And we'll just call this uh, teleport, I guess. And we're going to move the node here to the play from start. So we'll hold control click and then drag it to play from start. Now we'll open this up. And inside, we want to add a float track. Okay. Next, we're going to take our length here and set it to 0.13, um, just because this will be a really small value. So our event here, our teleport, will happen really fast. Um, you know, you could make it longer if you want, but I want ours to be really, f really fast. All right. So next, what you'll do is you'll just hold Shift and click uh, somewhere near zero here. And we'll change its time to zero and leave its value to zero as well. Next, we'll click near the end, near 0.13, and we'll set its time to 0.13. But this time, we want to say value one. All right. So now we can select both of these, and we'll just click these little frame buttons here to frame it up. And then we'll right click and say auto for key interpolation. Okay, so it'll kind of have a smooth, uh, you know, effect. All right, so we can compile and save. And now the last thing, we'll take this new track here, click on it, and we can rename it, and we'll just call this um, alpha because we're going to use this to drive a linear interpolation. Um, and I'll explain that in a second here. All right, so next what we want to do is we are going to manipulate the field of view on our camera here to kind of give that zoom in effect. Okay, so by default, the field of view is set to 90. Um, and as it goes lower and lower, it zooms in more and more. So we're going to go from about 90 to 45. So what we'll do is we'll take our first person camera and we'll drag it into the graph and then we'll say set field of view. And we'll use this function one here, set field of view, not the variable. All right? And we'll plug the update into um, our set field of view. Now next, um, for this field of view, we're going to right click and type in lerp and under float we're going to choose lerp so this will do a linear interpolation between two uh, two values at a specified you know kind of alpha value zero being um, it hasn't started at all or like you know it's at a and the value one being it's at b okay so that's where our alpha comes in so we'll plug that in now for a we're going to say 90 because we're starting at a 90 for our field of view and then for B, we'll say 45. And then we'll just hook this up. And now lastly, we're going to take our finished node. All right, so once this little effect is played, then we'll teleport ourselves. Okay? Just like that. So we'll add some reroute nodes to kind of, you know, give some better spacing here. There we go. And now the last thing that we want to do is after we've teleported, we just want to kind of undo this timeline. Okay? So We'll take this chunk of code right here, we'll hold Control c and then Control v to paste it. All right, it'll add a new timeline, um, and you can rename that if you want, but I'm not going to right now. Uh, and then we just want to take this teleport and plug it into reverse from end. All right, So it will reverse from 45 back to 90. Okay. So now the last thing that we need to do is do the same exact code here except for false. So we're going to delete this really quick and we'll just take all of this code and hold control C and then control V to paste it. All right. And off of false, we'll say play from start. And now for our destination location, we'll hook up this little, you know, reroute node. So we'll hook up the end location of our line trace. All right. And you know, again, you could add some reroute nodes to 
make the graph a little nicer like so okay so we've got that um, all we need to do is hit compile and everything should be good any errors should be gone all right so we can go ahead and try this out so let's hit play and if we right click now it should zoom in and then teleport us and then zoom out so we'll right click and see it kind of zooms in and boom right we teleport where we want to go so there you have it um, you know a quick and easy way to kind of add a cool little teleport effect and you know if you want to make the teleportation farther you just adjust this value here so you know you can make it 20 you know 2000 and then you'll start teleporting farther you know and you can teleport around really crazily and just everything's madness so there you have it um, I hope this has helped and if you want to see more in the future like or subscribe and we will see you in the next one